2.3 class, we are going to study a little bit more about derivative function. So before 2.3, we did algebraically how we are going to find the derivative as a function. And this time, we are going to review and then I'm going to actually go in really deep in appetizers. And then after that, we are going to find how we're going to find the derivative using the graph. So let's, there are some patterns, so I want you to keep playing with me. So let's look at appetizer 1. Look at the graph that we've been studying about our um, functions here. Then I want you to see that when does this function look like discontinuous. So here says when the function is not continuous, I want you to look at the function in here and then see what x value that you do not have a function continuing. Think about that and then also B is asking now when function is not differentiable what does a differentiable mean differential means actually derivative can you find the rate of change can you find the limit when it's approaching to that moment so I want you to see that when we can find the derivative at that moment. So I want you to think about A and B quickly before I'm going to answer. So pause it and then look at the graph and try quickly. Okay, so if you pause it and then you got to check that when it's going to be discontinuous. How we know that the function is discontinuous? Just put your finger on and then check when you have to lift it up. So my function is discontinuous in two parts where it is right here and right here which will represent negative 4 and 2 my function is not continuous then why we cannot we have to talk about function not continuous because if it's not continuous we cannot find the slope at that moment which means we can find the slope here we can i should draw that there i can find the slope here i can find slope here but at that moment it's not continuing that i don't know what the slope is so Later on, when we talk about this differentiability, we have to see that when do slope exist. If a slope exists, then we can find the rate of a change taking the limit. So we say as a fancy word, differentiable. Okay, so if you got the same answer as me, now I want you to look at the graph. When function is not differentiable, what does that mean? That means when function do not have a slope. So when do you not have a rate of a change? So in here, I do not have a slope at negative 4. I do not have a slope at negative 1. I do not have a slope at 2, because it's not continuing. And this one is hard to see. This one is up to you, because they try to make a vertical slope. So if you put 5, that's good. If you don't see as a vertical slope, I understand what you see as. So if it's a vertical slope, we do not have a slope exists. So do those four are the cases that we cannot find rate of change. Then I want you to be careful when limit exists. That's a different from differentiable. Differentiable is rate of change has a limit. So this one is a function of the limit and then this one is the rate of change of the limit. And this is the calculus this one is just a value where it goes to. So if we talk about here, do I have a limit at negative one? Do I have a limit at negative one? Yes, I do have a limit at negative one because of left hand limit from x goes from negative one negative, it goes to, let's just say that this is two, goes to two. If you look at x goes to negative 1 plus, where does this goes to? My function still goes to 2. So do I have a limit at 2? A limit at negative 1? Yes, I do have a limit at negative 1, which is 2, because I'm talking about the function value. But now, do I have a limit of the rate of a change? Do I have a limit of rate of change? I'm changing to now my question of calculus derivative differentiable then no why i do not have a limit at negative one that's why i cannot find slope at negative one because 
This slope is negative. This slope is positive. So when we take the rate of a change, your slope is not going to be the same. As you see, that's a positive, that's a negative. That your slope is not existing at negative one, so it's not differentiable. Does a limit exist? Yes. Does a limit of a rate of a change exist? No. I want you to see the differences. This one is f prime, and this one is f function. So that's clear differences between two. So when does rate of a change do not exist? When function is discontinuous, definitely you can see that this case and that case. When do we not have a, when the graph is corner, like a, they are kind of a absolute value. Absolute value function, you cannot find the slope because this side is negative one, this side is positive one. So when you're taking the limit of a rate of a change, the limit of a rate of a change do not mean that at that point, you do not have derivative. Do I have a derivative here? Yes. Do I have a derivative here? Yes. Do I have a derivative at zero of absolute value of x? No, because of a rate of a change is not same. So it doesn't exist. So corner is one of them. And as you know, in the algebra class, whenever it's a vertical slope, of course, slope do not exist, it's undefined. So I hope that this gives you good um, review of a continuous limit differentiable, okay? All those appetizer, I know it has a little deeper meaning on it. So now let's get ready for appetizer two. Okay, class, now let's start the appetizer number two. So this one will take a little time. I'm gonna explain this one very thoroughly. And then after this one, you have one more of what you have to do as an in-class activities. So make it yours. And then after that, we're gonna go a little bit faster pace in here. So I'm not gonna go into any more detail as much as this time of appetizer too, but we're gonna do rate of change ridiculously big one, but I will do it. So if you wanna have your video part and do it on the side, that will be great, but I will show all your work. So let's do it together. So this time what I like to do is, I have a function given in here. Then, do you think you can find the function of this one? So let's try to find the function. I see that it passed through those three points. So x plus two, x minus two, x minus five. So I have those three factors. And then, now I need to evaluate what my a value is. It is a positive for sure. And then now let's look at your y-intercept. Y-intercept is a four. In order to find y-intercept, you plug in zero to x. So if you plug in zero to x, you get two times negative two times negative five, which will make it 20, but I wanna have a four. That means my A value has to be one over five. Okay, did you get that? Hopefully you did. I got 20 but I want to have my y-intercept as a 4, so I divide by 5, that means my whole function divide by 5. So this function, because I want to take a rate of a change. Scary, right? So I will simplify this way, and then if I can take the rate of a change from here. So what we want to do is, now looking at the graph, I want to guess what this slope is approximately we are going to guess just looking at it so i want you to practice with me first what is this slope this is slope one this is slope two this is slope three this is slope four right so we are going to compare that this is a slope one slope two slope three slope negative four so i want you to see the slope how deep it is then this is going to be half this is negative half so let's compare this one as our slope. So when I look at negative two, feel it. What do you think this slope looks like? So if I put this one is negative two, uh, this positive two slope, this one is positive three, three slope, this is a positive four slope. For me, it looks like a more like a positive four. If you look at how much is a parallel, I feel that my guess of a slope at this moment is a four. Keep trying. This is my slope here. Then you can also extend it too. So, so you can extend it like this way. Do you see the rise 1.5? Uh, rise about 2 and then go over 1.5. Right? So that's going to be 
4 over 3, which is a 1.333. What I use, I use this point and this point after I extend it, rise 2 over 1.5 to 4 over 3. Okay, continue. Now I am going to look at this slope. Careful, I'm looking at other slope. Do you see that this is a negative 1? I see this slope is a little bit less than negative 1. So I'm going to press a negative 0 0.7. Continue at 1. At 1, my slope is right here. Now feel it. This is a 2. Does it kind of look like 2 to you? So it kind of look like 2, right? So I'm going to guess as a negative 2. Then let's look at this slope. That's a tricky one again. That looks like also 2 as well. Okay, I'm going to fix this one. If I see this one, this will be a little bit less than 2. So I will put as 1.8 because in order to be 2, it has to be here and here. But it's a little bit off, so 1.8. And at 2, I see that that looks like kind of slope as a 2. So I'm going to just guess as a 2. Continue, 1.3, I have a slope here. So I want you to extend it how they look like for me it looks like it went over 2 over 1.5 again kind of looks like this one so i will press about 1.3 over 3 is 1.3 okay mm -hmm. It's, we are guessing, so you don't have to be exact number, it can be 1.2, negative 1.4, 1.5 But since I'm a teacher, I have to be a little bit accurate So at 4, I want to fill it This one looks like less than 1 because you see that this is 1, so a little bit less than 1 So I will call it as positive 0.7 Okay, almost there, I hope you can guess Okay, I want you to try this one, how does it look? My guess is 3. If I put 3 here, that looks like a parallel, so I put 3 here. Okay, so what do we do have to do about this one? Now I'm going to graph my derivative function. I'm going to graph my derivative function. So let's look at how I graph this. And before we graph, there are two very important points, which is where your maximum and minimum happens. Class, what is the slope at this point? Which is, I look like a point 0.4 as an x, what is the slope? Negative 0.4, what is the slope? It looks like zero, right? The slope is a zero in here, so I'm gonna put that. And then also look at, about 3.6, do you see what is the slope at that moment? That's going to be zero. So I'm gonna put it between here at 3.6. I'm gonna put slope as a zero. Actually, we call this one a critical point and whatever slope makes a zero is actually um, easiest to start with. So I'm going to start actually where slope makes a zero. So this is a zero at maximum. This is a zero at minimum. As you see, your slope is zero as a flag then rest of them let's plug in and negative two slope is four negative one one point three and negative uh, zero but well, point seven one i get point one point eight two i get negative two and then three i get about negative one point three and then 4, 0 0.7, and 5, I got the 3. Oh, now do you guys see the pattern? What does this look like? So when I was doing this function, this function is Q function, right? Then when I was taking a derivative, what function did it become? It became x square function we are going to compute our coefficient but i want to see really crazy fact when you take a derivative your one of the degree becomes lower 
So now I get to have x squared graph when you graph it. But of course, we need to now prove it algebraically. So let's do rate of change. Right? This is going to be long. So I will do it together with you. So watch my rate of change. But look at, in order to do rate of change, Young, I don't want to do 1 over 5th. So I'm going to do rate of change of this function, rate of change of this function. And then after that, I'm going to multiply 1 over 5. Why? Think about this way y is equal to x function, I have a slope as m is 1, right? But if I have y is equal to 1 over 5 function, then I have a slope as 1 over 5. So when you do slope, after you take a derivative, if you take a derivative of this one, we actually done it before, right? You get 1, then you can just multiply 1 fifth to get your slope here. So I like to leave one fifth. Let me take a derivative of your part because if not, it's going to be so much headache. And end of the rate of change, I will multiply one fifth of your rate of change. Then you will still get this same answer. Just only this time. You won't do this one in the future, only this time. So let's do rate of change. Instead of using this function, this one's a little bit easier. So I'm going to put, and I'm going to save one fifth for very end. So let's plug in f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Carefully, it's going to be very long work for me. So f of a plus h, I'm going to plug in. So parentheses, a plus h squared minus 4, and a plus h minus 5. So I'm done with this part. Everybody see it? Minus, I'm going to subtract f of a, which is a parenthesis, a squared minus 4, a minus 5, over h. Okay, I will expand this one carefully, but before I expand, I know that this guy, so we can simplify a little bit easier. If I expand this one, it will be a squared plus 2a h plus h squared minus 4. I'm multiplying this one too a plus h minus 5 in here, okay? So it's gonna be, I will do this direction. It kind of easier for me to this way, not making mistake. So let's distribute first two terms. a cubed plus 2a squared h plus a. Not make mistake. Okay, so I got so far here, got so far here, and then so this one I expanded. Let's see, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And hopefully, I didn't make mistake. Now I'm going to have a negative and then distributing this one one more time. A cube minus 5a squared minus 4a plus 20. Okay, and then over h. Almost there. So I probably do not have a room. Let me see. Okay, since I do not have a room, I will put h in here, divide by h, and then let's simplify here together. So a cube, it will be canceling out all these terms. So a cube, a cube, you see the negative a cube, and plus 5a squared, plus minus 5a squared, plus 4a, and minus 4a, minus 20, plus 20. So you all cancel out these terms.
Okay, so let's look at my work and then H and H cancel out and I got this one and then from here I need to send my limit I'm going to send my limit as zero so let's see so that's what I got and then if I send in limit H as a zero then look at this goes to zero this goes to zero this goes to zero that my variable change of limit after you take which becomes instantaneous um, velocity instantaneous um, slope which is the derivative I get 3a squared plus minus 10a minus 4 so that's what I got as a rate of change then if I want to find my rate of change I'm going to plug in 1 fifth of 3a squared minus 10a minus 4 okay it was a long procedure so now I'm going to see that if my rate of change actually shows very close number of my guess how are we gonna find as we talk about now this is a function of derivative then I can plug in x value will give me each of the derivative so let me punch into calculator so you can pause it and then you can do together with me So I plug in negative 21, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 into my rate of change to see what is the slope at exactly at that point. So when I punch in, I got 5.6, 1.8, pretty good, right? Not bad, not bad with your guess, and that's what I got. So now I want you to see the whole big picture of a connection of a how rate of a change after you take a limit that value is going to be actually same as the slope that you guess and then using that you can actually find the derivative function and don't forget that this is a function as well which means you can program it you can just plug in each number then you can just pop it what I actually do with calculator I just put this one and then I program it basically I just put negative 2 pop it up negative 1 pop it up 0 so that I can get those numbers so I want you to um, utilize this one and then there's an appetizer is done there's an in-class activity is number one very similar question I just made it as a quadratic so pause the video and then continue next one if you can do it by yourself I know this was a very long video so do it and then compare the answer with me excellent job everybody for listening and then our main dish will be a little bit easier 
Okay, so how did it go class? In class activities, it took a while, right? So I want you to look at my answer. So first, I actually lined it and then as you see, I made my graph with negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 so that I can compare the pa parallel so that I can guess my slope at x point. So when I have a negative 6, I guess about 4, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. I was just keep drawing that's going to be 1, 2, 3. So I just try to see which one is more like to parallel to each other. So I hope that you got similar answer. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It should be around that number as an estimation. And did you find the function of this one? Y intercept as a negative 6 and positive 2. So it goes pass through. And then look at here. When I try to see this one, my Y intercept with this one makes a negative 12. However, I have my Y intercept as a 6. Do you see that my graph is upside down, concave down, that I have to have a negative? Then I want to make a 12 as a 6. That means my um, leading coefficient of the value has to be 1 over 2. So if I divide it by negative 1 over 2, you see that that gives me 6 as my y-intercept. So this is, uh, actually I was talking about this one. This is my function and then if you open it up and then multiply it out, that's how I guess, so that I can use the rate of a change. So now, look at carefully, I put into my rate of a change, do you guys see that a plus h square? I plug into this one and I save it negative 1 over 2 for later. Because I don't want to deal with all those negatives. So after I did that, and then plug into rate of a change, and look at my work, after sending limit here, I got this one as my function. So, I want to see can I graph this one with my guess? I'm going to use and then I'm going to graph my derivative function. So look at here. My function of original was x squared. Let's graph with my guess. It was a 4, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Oh, what's happening? Did you guys see that actually look like linear equation? In previous appetizer, we talked about when we have x cubed, it becomes x squared. This time we had x squared. Then what happened after you take in derivative? Your one degree gets smaller and we got something x function. Of course, when you look at it, we can actually find it even better. So that's the function I got. Then after the rate of a change, after the rate of a change, I got this one, so let's compute this one and then find exact value of the slope at that moment. So I have my equation negative 1 over 2, and the rate of a change is shown as 2x plus 4. If you simplify, it turns out to be negative x minus 2. So now, this is my derivative function. Let me use my fancy pen. So this is my derivative function. Now all you need to do is plug in here to get exact slope at that moment. So let's plug in negative 6. What do you get? If I get negative 6, negative negative 6, positive 6 minus 2 is, whoa, nice guess. I get 4. Continue. If I get negative 4, then that's going to be 4 minus 2 is going to be 2, 1. Continue that. It's going to be 0, negative 1. Oh, if I plug in negative 1, what do I get? Then it's going to be, if I plug in negative 1 plus 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Actually, that's what am I getting. Now, before I'm going to show you, can anybody find this function? Green color was our guess, right? So can anybody tell me what this function is? I see that slope is a negative x, and then y intercept negative 2 which is my slope function. I want to see this amazing moment. Whoa! Is that same as this one? What you did, I actually guessed find the derivative function using slope and y-intercept, which was negative x minus 2. That happened to be exactly the same as after you find rate of a change, and then after compute, I get negative x minus 2. Exactly the same.
Wow, isn't that beautiful? I hope that you enjoy this part and then I want to see that what's going on in here. So that is the magic moment all you learn about the math of a linear equation, rate of change, and how they relate it to each other in calculus class. I hope that this appetizer was really helpful for you. It was an appetizer, right? Feels like more dessert. But if you understand this whole material, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I hope that you see the whole picture why I show algebraically after taking rate of a change, I got this one. But also guessing my slope, and I got this one as well. Okay, so if you see it, if you feel it, an excellent job. And then now let's continue our main dish. So how was your appetizer? Already full, right? So now let's continue main dish. Our main dish and dessert is a little bit light today. So now what we're gonna do, we are going to start graphing derivative function. I show how it related algebraically, also with guessing. And then when you have as a x cubed function and your derivative function turn out to be x squared. And when we have x squared function, it looks like a linear function. So let's look at now a lot of our graphs and then let's see that if you can find those derivatives. So I will do the left side and I want you to the right side. So left side, again, always the easiest point is finding where is a zero. So I know that that will make my slope zero. So you can always start it from here. Then try to find your slope at zero here, at one here, and then three here, and then four here. As you see, this function is going to be kind of even function that this slope is going to be opposite of that one. So how are we gonna find this slope? Look at, this is one, this is a two. So this is a two. Do you see that it looks like a little bit less than two? And then a little bit more than one? So I will put this slope as 1.5. Then this one will be negative 1.5. This one I have a slope zero. And then let's look at next one. This is a slope two. Kind of look like slope two, right? So I can use as a two. And this one I could use as a kind of a two. So let's see if I can actually graph it. It could be a little bit off too because we are approximated. So I have a slope at 2, 1.5, 0, negative 1.5, and here is 2. So if you connect, this one actually supposed to be linear equation. So I know that this one should be more 1 than 1.5. But it's okay because we try to see this function. Um, just try to be more accurate. So this is my derivative graph. This is a derivative graph. So what you can see from here, I want you to see that when you look at derivative graph, you need to see whatever my graph of a green color is above the x-axis. What does this mean? That means my function is, original function is increasing. Look at, do you see that this function is increasing as a red color? And then after 2 is decreasing, related that to your derivative function. Because derivative function shows what your speed is. So I see from up to 2, since my function is positive, actually my speed is positive, speed is negative. Speed is positive, speed is negative. Look at it again. This one, my speed is positive and speed is negative. What does a speed positive mean? I'm still going forward. But look at here. If this one was speed 2, it's speed 1.5. What does that mean? I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down. Still, am I going forward? Yes. So you're driving, but you're slowing down because you saw this stop sign. Then that's what happening in this case. So whenever you're there, you stop. And then what does that mean? That means your speed is a 0. Your speed is zero. That means you stopped for the moment. Stopped for the moment. And then this one we need to study a little bit more. So I want you to see that first of all, when you look at the derivative graph, you will see that this one is increasing, this is decreasing. That means red color increasing and decreasing. Okay, let's look at one more. So as I said, easier to graph where your slope is going to be zero. So I know that I'm going to have three zeros in here. As you see, my function is x to the fourth. So if I take a derivative, it's going to be x to the third graph. This value, we're going to learn very end of the dessert part. So just wait for me. Just look at big picture. So it's going to pass those three. Now, I want you to guess 
this row and as you see that's a negative 2 that's that's negative 2 this is a negative 3 so it's more look like a negative 3 right so I will put it a negative 3 and here my slope is a 0 and then look at, at 1 I have a slope like this now this is 1 this is a 2 do you see it's more look like 2 so I'm gonna put slope as a 2 and then this one slope 0 and then at here probably kind of look like slope 2 I'm kind of guessing from here to here and then I have a slope 0 Again, now I want to guess this. I want to guess this one. This is one. This is two. So that kind of look like two to me. And then this is a three. And then look at this will be three or four. So this is a four. So kind of between three and four. So I will put as four. Then using those coordinate, let's graph my derivative function. So if I using a negative three, I'm going to have negative 3 right here I'm going to have a 0 I'm going to have a 2 and I have back to 0 and then this is going to be that's a negative 2 my mistake so that's a negative 2 and back to 0 and positive 2 and then slope at the 4 so I want to connect these points and that's my derivative graph as expected, do you see the x cube graph, right? It's going to be x cube graph. And now, look at my red color graph very carefully. Where my graph is decreasing, my graph is decreasing, red color, not orange color, from negative infinity to negative 2 is decreasing. Again, my graph, 0, 2, 2 is decreasing. Now, I want you to look at your orange color graph where your graph is negative. Where is your graph negative? Do you see this one is negative? Do you guys see that this one is negative and then this one is negative? Why? It's below the x-axis. So look at negative 2 to negative 2, my derivative function is negative. And then 0 to 2, my derivative function is negative. So I want you to see that when your derivative function shows below the x-axis, that means your original function is decreasing. That means if you go backwards, other way around, if your derivative function is positive, let me use a black color, your derivative function is positive here to here, and here it's positive, then look at your original function from this interval to that interval, because you see that your orange color, zero negative 2 to 0 is above the x-axis step, your original function of negative 2 to 0 is increasing. One more time, your orange color graph is above the x-axis after 2 to infinity. That means your original function, 2 to infinity, will be positive function. Why is that important? You're going to do backwards when you do integral. That means you're going to have this graph, orange color, then you're going to go backwards on next semester, or it could be end of the, this semester. So I want you to understand that when it's increasing and decreasing. So now I want to pause the graph and then do one more time of your in-class activities. Graph roughly what your derivative function graph would look like and then compare with me. Okay, so pause it. Okay, how is your graph? And then let's compare the answer. Of course, this number will be approximate. So I put it each time the slope, I estimated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I hope that you also see it. So I put it 2 and 0, negative 1. So from here, I want to connect my graph and it's going to look like x squared. Did you guess it's going to be x squared? Because when you see this one, this is x cube graph. So if I take a derivative, it's going to turn out to be x squared graph. Okay, how about next one? Okay, now let's compute the next one. This one looks like negative x to the fourth power. So if you take a derivative, it's going to be negative x to the cube. This number, we're gonna, I'm going to help you on dessert. So wait for me. So using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 slope that I guessed and then connect this one and then do you see that your graph looks like a negative x cubed? Of 
course of that factor coefficient we are going to go a little bit more detail in next one so i hope that you got the derivative graph and i put actually a bunch more so let's keep practice let's keep practice okay, so let me continue our main dish and then let me explain one more time thoroughly and then as you see there will be a more below so let's just make it as a um, in-class activities and let's compare them all together so let me explain one more time so when you look at this one I said as you usually it's the easiest point you can find is where it makes a zero so I know that this is a zero this is a zero this is a zero as a slope so I'm gonna have a slope zero slope zero and slope zero in here it's gonna pass through so let's compute each values at slope so this is going to be let me change a little bit better marker so this is a slope and then this is slope this is a slope this is slope oh i see another zero so that's another zero and then this is a slope this is slope this is a slope and this is slope. okay so let's compute one by one this slope looks like a bigger than four that's four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll put it at negative eight. And as you see, that's a zero. This is a one. So I can put it as a one. That's fine. Or 1.2. That's a slope zero. That's a slope zero. So now in between here, I need to find the slope between here because zero to zero is so hard to connect. So guess this one. Between here, what will be the slope? Does it look like a negative one for you? So I'm going to use that. And then this one has a slope. I want to use a positive one, zero, and that look like this is a negative two, a little bit steeper. So I want to use negative three. And this one, I will use about negative six. Okay, negative six is about this. So just, uh, I want to make it very sharp. So using that, now let's connect my graphs. Let's connect my graphs. So here, negative eight, I have a zero, one, zero don't forget between here we have negative one zero one zero negative three negative six okay anybody could guess what this function look like one two three four five so that looks like negative x to the fifth if i take a derivative i know that it's gonna look like x to the fourth power so let's connect x negative x to the fourth power look like something like this if i connect Oh, do you see that that's the shape that I want to desire? Then now, I'm going to go one more time of the future lecture that you need to know. So look at the red color graph, red color graph, and tell me where your functions are increasing. So where is it increasing? Where is the function increasing? Red color graph. So my function is increasing negative 2 to 0. And then it's increasing one, two, three, right? So I'm looking at red color. Now I want to look at the blue color where your function is above the x-axis. I see that negative two, two, zero. And I see that one, two, three. Uh -oh. Do you see that what I tried to say? So you can see original function where your function is increasing. However, you can also see that First derivative graph, if graph above the x-axis, anything is increasing, anything below it is decreasing. Then what about at zero? So above is increasing, below is decreasing, then what about your first derivative at zero? What happened? That means your slope of the original function is going to be zero there. You are going to have local maximum or local minimum. It's going to turn around because you have to make slope zero and this is the only way you can make slope zero or you can change concavity. This one we have to have a slope zero when you're changing it. So I want to look at this one and make it yours as when it's positive, when it's increasing. And then I want you to do one more time about this one. And then I want you to do actually rest of this one and then compare the answer with me, okay? So pause the video and then try page number two and page number three, there are six more and then do that with me. Okay, so how did you do next one? So again, I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slopes in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven slopes. And then between that, I try to find this slope. 
and try to find this slope so that I understand a little bit better. So let's compare your guess of this slope. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. 3 can be 4, 3 can be 3.5. So as I plot and then let's see my original function looks like x to the fifth power. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I take a derivative, I know that it's going to look like x to the fourth power. So let's compute here. So if I connect... That's how it looks like. Yonga, how come yours goes so deep? Because when I look at here, do you see this is a negative 3? And it's a little bit bigger than that, so I actually made it negative 4. Same reason, this is a negative 3, so I don't feel like that's right, so I made it negative 4. Oh, I should probably put this one as a negative 4 or 5. So, my graph of x to the fourth power kind of looks like this shape. Of course, when you have a rateable change of this function, it looks a lot better. But we are approximating. So, this is so far for me, it's a really, really good graph. And also, again, I wanted to see that when my function is decreasing in here. So, look at the red color function. My function is decreasing these two parts, here and here. Right? Let me use different color. My function is decreasing here and here. Then now, look at this part of the, your derivative function. Do you see that this interval, your graph is below? In this interval, your graph is below. So you can see, looking at the derivative function, when it's going to be speed is going to be positive, and when the speed is going to be negative. So why we have to have a derivative function? Because, think about sometimes on the newspaper, or about the weather. They're not going to tell you the real original function, they're gonna say, oh, wind is blowing like 8 miles per hour. When you listen 8 miles per hour, are we talking about original function or are we talking about rate of change? 8 miles per hour is we are talking about actually slow function. So when they on the newscaster say wind is blowing 8 miles per hour, that means this is a slope. So in order then to actually get back to original function, you have to take antiderivative, which is it's going to be we call it integral. So that's going to be end of the semester. But I want you to see that in reality, a lot of times we use rate of change in word, but you just don't know that when we are actually using it. So that's why I want to mention about it. So sometimes we use your derivative function in real life and then in order to get that one into the equation you have to go back and if I add one more you may heard about differential equations and that's what you guys are gonna do differential equation means you have a derivative function and you're gonna take the antiderivative or yeah antiderivative to find the original function okay so I want you to stop and then pause the video. On the third page is all about actually in class activities. I explain all the main ideas. So I wanted to make it those six questions yours and then compete the, com compare your answer with me. Okay, so class, it has shown as a main dish, but let's compare just as in class activities. So I just compute each one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slopes, and then that's what I got. So I indicated here so negative four, negative one, zero, and half, negative one point two, and zero and five. So as you see, the shape of the x, the function is x to the fourth power. So I expect that my derivative function will be x cubed, as you see it, as you see it. And then when you look at the derivative function, also I want you to see that where it makes a zero. Here's zero, here's zero. So you see that local minima. And then remember when your function is changing the concavity up to concavity down, that moment your slope is gonna pass through actually zero in here. Okay, then this one I will save it for last one. So next one, this one if you find this slope in each part, that's the slope my estimate. So here is a 4, here is a 1, here is a 0.7, here is a 0.4, here is a 0.2, and here is a 0.1. So my function is going to look like this way as my derivative function. Just look at here. Is my function increasing? Yes. Does that mean am I going forward? Yes. But what's happening? Each time your speed is getting slow. If it was a 1, it's a 0.4, it's a 0.1. Why? You are trying to stop. You saw the stop sign, you are decelerating. So that is what it shows here. 
So although I'm going forward, my slope is decreasing. When you say, when I say slope is decreasing, that means acceleration. What does acceleration? Acceleration is a double derivative, second derivative. So first derivative becomes a speed, second derivative becomes acceleration. And that one we are going to visit after your exam number one. So just remember, if you take a derivative, then it becomes a speed. So you see that, oh, my speed is slowing down. My speed is slowing down. And then after 2.3, we are going to learn about second derivative, which is related to acceleration. Okay, let's look at first one. Also, I plot this one. What do you think this graph look like? Do you see that it's passing through 2.7? This looks like e to the x function of exponential. So find the slope, I marked it, and then if you connect that one, do you see that actually looks like an e to the x again or exponential function again? Cool thing about exponential function of e to the x, when you take a derivative, you get back to yourself. So derivative of e to the x is actually become an e to the x. E is a very weird number, but it is a very powerful number until you know a little bit more step. Okay, so let's say before, let's look at the last one. So when, how are we going to graph our rational functions? They don't have much information. So I'm going to just use the limit and deducing here. As you see here, do you see that at negative 1, my slope looks like 1. So I'm going to mark it here. And observe from negative infinity to negative 2. Do you see that by the time goes, your slope is getting really fast. If this one was 1, 2, 10, 100. So I see that whenever it gets closer to your vertical asymptote, my slope is going to be really big number. And then here is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So I'm going to do 0.2. Don't forget that's x axis. So 0 0.2, you can go down the horizontal asymptote. So my left side of the function, I could guess it is going to be look like this way. Still, you have an asymptote here because you cannot evaluate that value. Now, let's look at the middle part. Do you guys see that all my slope is actually positive? So, guess that. That's going to be 100, right? So, let's say that's 100. And then getting smaller, 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 smaller. And what's going to happen at slope here when they switch in that moment? At that moment, when we change the concave down to concave up, you have to have a slope zero. So it's going to pass slope 0. And then, as you see, that's going to be 2, 300. So 2, 300. So my middle part of the graph is going to be look like this way. It kind of look like parabola. Parabola. And also, before we do, I wanted to see that is my function increasing everywhere in middle part? Yes. That means my graph of the derivative function has to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. It has to be, everything has to be above the x-axis. So now look at this one too. So as you see now, here I can say positive 100, positive 100. Here's going to be 1, and then 1 half, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So my function is going to look like this way. So my derivative function is orange color. It looks like this, this and this. However, look at here, is all my function above the x-axis? Yes. What does that mean? That means my original function has to be everywhere increasing or decreasing. Everywhere has increasing. So now look at your red color, increasing, increasing, increasing. Of course, they are increasing differently. That's increasing exponentially, increasing x cubed way, increasing logarithmically. So your function is going to be different However, this is going to be your derivative function of the x-axis. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and hope that this one was a good um, review of exercise of the in-class activity of the derivative function. And there are two more and then do it. And then after two more, I hope that you finally got it. Okay, class, we are almost there. So now let's look at this one. What does this function look like? It looks like one over x, right? So I took a derivative. I took a derivative and then my values are shown below here. So if I plot this one, my function is going to look like this way. Uh-oh, what does this one look like? Anybody remember? Is it kind of look like an x 
square, right? 1 over x square. So let's see, why is that? Because this function is x to the negative 1, right? Then as I said, whenever we take a derivative, what happens? The power 3 becomes 2. That means negative 1 becomes negative 2. So I want you to see that if it's a power function, the power is going to be reduced by 1. Now, last one of the, our graph of the derivative function. When you see this one, anybody notice what function is this? Did you see as a sign x? Then now let's graph it. 0, negative 1, 0, so 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Now I'm going to connect this one carefully. Whoa, what does this look like, class? If I take a derivative of a sine function, actually it becomes a cosine function. Isn't this beautiful? I think this is really, really fascinating for me. Like sine taking derivative becomes a cosine. Okay. So I hope that you are a little bit more confident about graphing. If you look at the last page, last page, page number five, I actually put 10 more questions I'm going to collect. But I want you to do it together with, you, with your classmate, or you can just keep evaluating what are these loops, and then connect them, and then put it in together with your appetizer um, handout homework that you have to upload it. So there are total five pages and I'm going to put all of them and then I'm going to check page number five as well. And then it will be graded, but make sure that it is an open book. You can check, you can do with your groups together. Just play with me. So main dish number three. Now, I want you to see this one. What do you see from here, class? Ten, do you see rate of a change, right? If you see rate of a change, that's very good. So rate of a change of a what function? Do you see a plus h? So I see the a plus h to the power. So what is the function I'm looking for? My function I'm looking for is x to the what power? Sixth function at where? At where? Actually sixth function of where I'm looking for rate of a change. What x value? This time my x value will be 2. So if you put in rate of a change as x to the 6, that's going to be a plus h to the 6 minus a to the 6. However, a value is a 2, so it becomes a 2 plus h to the 6 minus 2 to the 6 power is going to be 64 over h as a rate of change. Now, I want you to see that backwards, what this means, and then finding function at where. Okay, so we only have a dessert part left, so you guys doing good? Just uh, continue, and then I know that my video it feels like a little bit slow on the YouTube. Please do your Kindle 1.25 fast forward so that it doesn't feel like a one hour. But from now on, our lecture will be about one hour because lots of explanation. But listen explanation because that's the most important thing. And finally, we are on this part of 2.3, and after this one, we will have a test. So just uh, keep practice with me, keep playing with me, and make it yours. So I saw you, I show you the uh, function of earlier what's going to happen. If I have x, then actually my power is going to be one lower. So what is going to happen if I take a rate of change? This one is going to be, becomes one. You know, how did you get that? How did you get that? Well, because I know that x to the one is my power. So if I reduce it, it has to be x to the zero. What is x to the zero? Which is? one so now i want you to look at this one i know that it's going to be x because one power low but do you guys remember we did lots of rate of change i want to go back we did it um individually or with in-class activity several times so anybody remember after we taking the to what we get we got actually two here so i want to actually in try to find what is the main function after derivative x cubed will give me x square x to the fourth give me x cubed so now, look at this one. 1 over x is what as a power? That's a negative 1. So what do you expect? I'm going to have negative 2. Then how about here? x to the 1 over 2 minus 1 makes negative 1 over 2, right? So that's what I'm going to have. Then, as you notice, now we have those rules. If you take a derivative of x cubed, then it becomes x squared. And we actually did it this one also previous section, and it's gonna turn out to be three x squared. I want to see the pattern. If I have x to the fourth power, I have x to the third, and then this four is gonna come from here. Yonga, where did you get that four? Yonga, where did you get the three? Do rate of change, okay? I want to do rate of change, then you will see that this rate of change, when you plug in, you will get this one. 
the weight of a change, then you will get this one. So now I want to guess what's the pattern here. The four comes front, three comes front. So what's going to be right front over here? Do you see that negative one has to come and then one power low? Then what's going to be front here? One over two is going to be front and then your power is going to be one low. Okay. Now I want you to pause your video and then try one, two, three, four, five, six, and then compare with me if you get the right answer. Try to compare the right side and then compare your coefficient with me. Okay, so let's look at the pattern here. So I wonder if you can find at least what the function after. So all I did was subtracting one, negative two subtracting one is negative three, negative four subtracting is negative five, and then three over two is gonna be one over two, negative one over two is gonna be negative three over two. And then while with the front number, just to look at it, the power two comes from, power five comes from, power negative two comes from, four comes from, and then that's how we derivative. it. So if you have x to the sixth power, I know that you're gonna have x to the fifth and then six comes here. If you have x to the negative, oh, that's the hard one, four over three, then subtract one makes negative one third and then four over three comes x to the negative four over three then you have to subtract one so x to the negative seven over three and then the number four over three is the front and this one is the power function derivative rule just so if it's a power function you can bring power in front and then lower one below so okay. now we are repeating next three questions again from previous section, but this time we are going to use a fast way of the our finding derivative instead of finding rate of a change. So these are number two. I want to find the equation tangent line passing through this one. So earlier, if you look up the 2.2, you guys already did rate of a change using um, slope formula or f over a plus h minus f over a over h go back and check what did you get as a rate of a change I believe that you got 2x minus 8 as a rate of a change after limit sending h as a 0 so now I want to do fast wave for derivative so I want to find the derivative let's use the rule that I learned x square if I take a derivative what do I get I'm gonna have 2x everybody see it just look at above and I have a negative 8x if I take a derivative I get negative 8 whoa what does that mean now I found derivative function that I can plug in any number to find slope so this time I got the my slope function then what will be the slope at 3 so let's plug in slope is what will be slope at 3? So if I plug in 3 here, 2 times 3 minus 8 makes negative 2. So I found slope as a negative 2. And then when point is 3, what is the coordinate passing through? 3 comma, 3 squared, 9 minus... 9 minus... 24 plus 9 will make... 18 minus 24 is a minus 6, so I get minus 6, then I can put it into equation y plus 6 is equal to negative 2x minus 3, organize it, negative 2x plus 6 minus 6, so I get y is equal to negative 2x as my equation at 3. Okay, let's do in-class activities. So I want to use the same format and then try and then if you get the same answer. Rate of a change, you guys did it 2.2, so write it down, write it down. And then now you see if you can use fast way of a derivative. So let's look at in-class activity. Derivative rate of a change, I got it from 2.2. And then I took the derivative of x to the negative 1. 1 power low and then your coefficient will be negative 1 so I got the same one but this time I want to find the equation x is equal to 3 so I can plug in f over 3 then what I get is my slope my slope is going to be negative 1 over 9 then point that passing through is going to be 3 comma 1 over 3 so my equation is going to be y minus 1 third times negative 1 9 times x plus x minus 3 
So let's organize. This one will be negative 1 over 9. X minus plus 1 third plus 1 third. So I get 2 over 3 as my equation at 3 of the tangent line. This is a tangent line. And in class activity 3, same thing, I got this one from 2.2 and I take the derivative x to the 1 over 2, 1 power low, so 1 over 2, your power comes to front, so if you organize 1 over 2 square root of x. I want you to keep your power as a positive, so bring it to this way. I do not like this answer, I do not like this answer, so write it this way for next semester. And then from here, by plugging, I want to find slope at 4. Then why is slope at 4? I see that it is going to be 1 over 4. Point passing through is 4 comma 2. So equation y minus 2 is equal to 1 over 4, x minus 4. If I organize 1 over 4, x minus 1 plus 2 makes 1 over 4x plus 1 as my equation. I hope that I didn't make a mistake. And then this is a 4 before exam number 1. And I hope that with doing in-class activities, you guys understand everything. There's a page number 5. So do your graph and then post it. You can actually talk with your classmates. Okay, good job everybody.